Court of Duke Green, I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. Uh, again, I apologize for the delay there. I um, was supposed to start doing uh, Facebook Live today, and um, I can't find my other phone to uh, call those who, uh, to speak to those who are listening by phone. So um, that was the whole delay is. So I just had to go ahead and, I guess, delay the Facebook Live today and just do Periscope. Uh, but again, I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus, those who are here. Uh, for the first time, I pray that something will be said or done today that will change your life, that will have a great impact uh, in your life. So I'm going to open up in prayer, and we're going to dive right on into the Word of God. Father God, we come now, we give your name glory, we give your name honor, we give your name praise. We thank you for this day that you have made, O oh God. We shall rejoice and be glad in, O oh God. We thank you for another opportunity, O oh God, to uh, open up your Word, O oh God, the Word that gives life. We thank you for all that's going to be said and done tonight. I come against the spirit of distraction right now. I come against any seed the enemy will try to sow, God. We blood block it now in the name of Jesus. And we know that your word, O oh God, shall go down as a seed in our life and take root. So we thank you now in advance for all that's going to be said and done. We give your name all glory, honor, and praise. Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, so I'll do a quick recap. Of course, we started uh, a new series uh, on last week uh, entitled uh, How to Hear from God Daily. Uh, and of course, we said that one of the biggest challenges uh, in the Bible, Christ, uh, is to, uh, it shouldn't be a challenge, but it is a challenge, but it's how to hear from God, and not just how to hear from God, but how to hear from God daily on a daily basis, on a consistent basis. And, um, and of course, we said how um, it's a challenge sometimes knowing uh, if it's your thoughts, if it's, if it's God speaking about a particular situation, because sometimes our feelings can speak so loud until uh, you may think that it's God. So understanding how to hear the voice of God and how uh, we have to be begin with the first premise that uh, that God is not silent. So we spoke about how God just is not silent. He's not silent. Uh, and and we, we talked about a few things that, uh, number one, God is speaking. Uh, number two, God wants to speak to you. Number three, God wants to hear from you. Number four, the enemy is speaking and wants to distract and confuse you. And number five, that consistent time with God will produce consistent answers. We also say that some of you, uh, with your relationship with God, you subconsciously, and it's interesting because I just had a conversation with someone uh, yesterday, and, and they were in that same situation where subconsciously they were disappointed so much until they, 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 their faith wasn't where it, where it needed to be. Uh, and, and, and because they... Uh, been disappointed because certain things had manifesting, things they prayed about had manifested in their life, so therefore they felt um, that disappointment was there, so it impacted how they approached God with certain things. And so, because um, it was fear of being disappointed uh, by whatever it is that um, God, uh, what they think God did to do or what didn't manifest, but of course it wasn't God, it was the enemy, like we said, trying to block it, trying to cause certain things from manifesting, but of course, sometimes naturally it's easy to think, oh, God, why you didn't do this? Oh, God, why did you allow that, et cetera, et cetera. And so we talk about how some people have those soul wounds uh, when it comes to feeling, feeling like they've been uh, let down uh, by God. And so, again, just putting that all uh, in perspective um, that, again, with that being said, that God is speaking. God wants to hear from you. Uh, he's not silent. Uh, of course, the enemy is trying to distract and cause this issue, etc. But again, just putting it all uh, uh, in perspective. Uh, and, 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 and of course, uh, we were saying how, of course, Christ said that my sheep hear my voice, etc. And I know that they, they know my voice, they follow me. So again, if, if, if he's saying that my sheep hear my voice, he said my sheep hear my voice. So right then, that means you have the ability to hear his voice. So you hear his voice, and then he says, then they, and then they, they know, it, don't know him, and then they follow him. We follow him. We know his voice. And so therefore, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can hear his voice. So it's a promise uh, that you will hear from him. Again, it's a promise that you will hear from him. So again, just putting that all uh, uh, into perspective that, again, God is speaking. So you have to understand, God is speaking. Repeat that to me. God is speaking. Again, say it again. God is speaking. And so you have to, I'm going to keep reiterating that over and over again so you can know that he really is speaking. And we talk about how faith, the word says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I gave you one uh, uh, example that, again, your, your body may be sleeping, but your spirit is, is, doesn't sleep. Your spirit is awake. Your spirit is, 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 is still awake. 
so you can even uh, get the word of God uh, and, and play the word of God uh, throughout um, play, play the word of God throughout the night while you're sleeping and um, and he will and your spirit is being fed so that's one way um, to be able to hear from God well to feed your spirit while you're sleeping is to play the word of God uh, again many Bible apps have it where you can just play the audio version of it uh, and then they will um, just keep, keep playing over even on YouTube you can you can create your own playlist and, and find those scriptures that, that you want and you can play it over and over and over uh, and over again so again just putting that uh, in perspective for you that um, that you have the ability to feed your spirit uh, in that regard all right so I'm gonna try to get back on this call now I got found the the phone so I'm about to set up Facebook live so I'm gonna take a brief moment here to, to switch over uh, make sure I got the speaker right Please enter. okay well, let me try that again all right and so of course tonight we're gonna go in part two so I'm just gonna switch this line over real quickly So one sec, so if you order this by phone, you get a quick disconnect, and that's what's going on. All right. All right, so now we're back up, uh, back up and running there. So about to get uh, the live stream going uh, with Facebook. All right. All right. So we should be good to go now. Okay. All right, all right. So now we're we're up on Facebook Live as well, and so again, so we're gonna go into part two uh, of our series, uh, how to hear from God daily. And tonight is gonna be communing with God. We're gonna talk about communing with God, communing with God. All right, and so and so, kind of picking back a little bit on what I talked about last week. Um, now, to hear from God daily, please understand, to hear from God daily requires us to commune with God daily. Again, it requires us to commune with God daily. And so, hearing from God uh, is something that every follower of Christ needs. Again, hearing from God is something that every follower of Christ needs. We understand that premise. And so, please understand. Fellowship with God is not hard, but it does take time. Again, it's not hard, but it does take time. And it takes you making time all the time. I'm going to say it again. Fellowship with God is not hard. It's not difficult, but it takes time. And it takes you making time all the time. That going again, making prayer priority. How much, about, how much have I said that you don't uh, revolve... Uh, you, you don't you don't you pretty much don't revolve prayer around your schedule but your schedule should revolve around prayer not trying to fit prayer into your schedule but you need to fit your schedule into prayer everything revolves around your prayer life it revolves around your time with God and so we have to we have to make that a priority we have to make that that commitment uh, and so one definition of community we talk about communing with God uh, and we're gonna get a little deeper and show you uh, how even with some of the things you've been taught or some of the tradition that you kind of grew up in, thinking that um, communion with God looks one particular way, right? And so, and so with that being said, again, uh, uh, one definition of commune is to talk or converse intimately. Again, to talk or converse intimately, to talk together intensely and intimately. 
interchange thoughts or feelings, to be to be in intimate communication. According to the free dictionary.com, to be in intimate communications. So notice the key words here: intimate communication, intimate communication. So it's about relationship. As we all know, we get that part. It's about relationship, but you must practice getting in the presence of God daily. Again, you must practice getting into the presence of God daily, on a daily basis, on an ongoing basis. Now, follow me now. And so you have to keep showing up and keep showing up and keep showing up until you know that you know for sure, until you know for sure when is God speaking. And ultimately, it begins with fellowship with God. And this goes to prayer, studying the Word of God, and praise and worship. So you, again, you need a good dose of all three. And like, like I mentioned last week, as I piggyback on it again today, that even even with the Word of God, remember we said faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Even with the Word of God, when you read Scripture, that's God speaking. When you when you when you read Scripture, that is God speaking. And so therefore, God is always speaking. He's always speaking. So you read the Word of God. That's God speaking. That's hearing from God right there. And scripture said the word of God is alive. It's alive. It's, it's, it's a living word. So that's why you can read a scripture today and read that same scripture tomorrow and get something completely different because the word of God is alive. It's active. It's alive. It's a living word. Living word. And so with that being said, because it's a living word, when you speak, when you uh, uh, study the word of God, scripture He's speaking. The Lord is speaking through his word. That's why I say, again, when you're sleeping, one, one simple thing, make sure you're getting that word. And I, it, it's like I said, to, to play the Bible while you're sleeping. Get that get that Bible app. You version is one app. There's many other versions that it will, it will play the audio version of the Bible. Like I said, go to YouTube, find scripture, you know, put audio Bible, etc. And it will play it and you can hit repeat. I'll put it on a playlist and, and click the little repeat button so that it plays and plays and plays while you sleep so it doesn't just stop and that's it. So you're getting fed the word even while you sleep. Your spirit is getting fed while you're sleeping. And of course, you still need to do that time when you're awake to study the word because you're not studying the word right there. That word is just going into your spirit. It's feeding your spirit. And so that's very important. So there's no excuse to, to not be feeding your spirit. That's one simple thing you can do to make sure that that word is going in you. And of course, But you still need that time of course, when you're awake to study the Word of God, to study the Word of God. And so please understand, time spent with God should be as a nece a, a, such a necessity as, as it is breathing. As it is breathing. As it is breathing. Because your spirit literally needs the Word of God. It gives life to your spirit. And so, and so hearing from God, please understand, hearing from God was never supposed to be difficult. I'm going to say it again. Hearing from God was never supposed to be difficult. Never supposed to be difficult. But, uh, but what happened along the way, we have to ask ourselves, what happened? What happened? Why, why does it seem like it's so difficult at times? Why does it seem like God is silent? Why does it seem uh, uh, that you're not hearing from God? Yes, we know, as we talked last week, that the enemy will try to uh, put blocks in your way. The enemy will try to block you from hearing from God. Especially from hearing from God daily. The enemy will try to block you from hearing from God. They'll put up uh, modes of uh, uh, walls to try to cause uh, communication gaps, right? Uh, so that they, they try to they try to interrupt your heavenly frequency. So, so yes, yes, they can do this. However, you must keep showing up and keep showing up and keep showing up. But guess what? You can't hear from God about what the enemy is doing unless you consistently go to God. Again, you can't hear from God about what the enemy is doing or trying to do if you don't consistently go to God. How can you hear from him if you're not going to him? How can you hear from him regularly? Because yes, there are those sudden points when you know Paul was on the road to Damascus and then he had that encounter with Christ. But I'm talking about continuously. That was that life-changing encounter for him, uh, continuously, a daily basis. Because guess what? We need to hear from God daily. What, what Scripture says that uh, trust in the Lord, lean not on your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your, your path. And all your ways acknowledge Him. It says, and all your ways acknowledge Him, then He shall direct your path. Yes, the steps of a good man are ordered by God, but acknowledge Him in all your ways. Lean not to your own understanding. He'll direct your path. He'll so therefore you say, okay, well, well, 
With that being said, we know he's going to direct my path, but I'm not hearing from him. I'm not hearing from him at the level that I need to hear from him. On a daily basis. On a daily basis. So again, putting that in perspective. He wants to hear from you on a daily basis. And he is speaking to you on a daily basis. And the more you go to God, the easier it should be uh, become to hear from him daily. The easier it should become to hear from him daily. Daily, on a daily basis. And, and look, we understand Satan is crafty. Yes, we understand Satan is crafty, but God is far more wise. God is far more wise. And so if the enemy is blocking you, follow me now, because I'm, I'm, I'm building a point here, building my case. If the enemy is blocking you from hearing from God in prayer or worship, go to the Word. If the enemy is blocking you from hearing from God during worship, go to prayer. So, so, so you understand it? If he's blocking you in one area, some folks say, I, I read the word, but I can't, I'm not getting anything. I'm not hearing from God. Okay. That's clear the enemy's trying to block in that area. Go to prayer. And then so they, you need a healthy balance of all three of them. But I'm showing you that if he's blocking in one area, use the other areas. You, you get the point? So you must realize that you have more than one means of hearing from God. You, you, you got to catch this now. Again, I'm not talking to your flesh. I'm talking to your spirit because I'm, I'm helping you to understand that you have more than one means of hearing from God. I'm, I'm getting you out of your box tonight. I'm getting you co completely out of your box. Again, you have more than one means of hearing from God. God will speak through people, as we understand, uh, that will bear witness with your spirit. Uh, sometimes uh, 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 you need to hear the preached word. Sometimes he may be speaking to you on the t-shirt someone's wearing, at the grocery store, in your car, on the radio, on a, on a commercial, on a billboard. He's speaking in all these different ways. But we're accustomed to trying to get him to speak in one way. But like I said, if the enemy, even the enemy is blocking that mode of communication, there's so many other modes. Every day God's speaking to you through signposts. You know, why do I keep seeing the same number? What, what, what's going on? What is God saying about that? Why every time I wake up, it's the same time. He's speaking to you in many ways. But you may not, I mean, many people say, well, I, God knows God keep waking up. You, but you sitting there rolling over going back to sleep. If you waking up at the same time every night, maybe God is trying to tell you something. But you're like, well, he ain't saying that. So uh, I go back to sleep. God, what, what you want? What is it? It'll be, it'll make sense to get up there and start praying. There's a reason. In dreams, you speak to you in dreams. Yes, the enemy get into dreams too. And then God will expose the enemy to let you know what the enemy is trying to do in your life. So God is always speaking. Say it again with me. God is always speaking. He is speaking every day through so many different means. You can have a conversation with someone and, and it can bring confirmation too. They can be talking about something completely different. Don't have nothing to do directly with what you're dealing with, what you've been asking God for. And boom, confirmation comes. Confirmation comes. God is always speaking. And some of you are feeling like, well, God, I'm not hearing anything from you. God, you're not speaking to me. He's speaking to you in so many different ways. When, when, when Elijah was running from Jezebel, he was like, well, God wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in, he wasn't in the wind. But he heard that still, small voice. He's speaking to you in the midst of your storms. He's speaking in the midst of your the spiritual warfare that you're going through and battling the enemy. He's still speaking to you. But you feel like, well, I prayed and I didn't hear anything. Get in the word. I got in the word. I didn't hear anything. I didn't get anything. Get in your praise and worship. He's still not speaking to me. Open your eyes. He's speaking to you on a billboard. He's speaking to you on a, on a t-shirt. He's speaking to you in a conversation. He's speaking to you when you're driving in the car. He's speaking to you on a bus. He's speaking to you on a train. He's speaking to you on an airplane. He's speaking everywhere, all day, every day. All day, every day. Did you hear me? All day, every day. Because how many times have I said, said to you, God is into all the details. God is concerned about the intricate details of your life. You can never be more descriptive and more detailed than God. Scripture says that even the very clear on your head, He has numbered. God is into the details. Contrary to proper belief, God is into the details. He is, he is into every detail of your life. Into every, he, if, if He was into the details, just look at, your, look at you. Look at the human being. Look at a human being. With two eyes, nose, ears, mouth, teeth. I mean, here's all. And even how you look how complex when you start getting into nerves and cells and, and how 
all this stuff operates like he's into details. He is all into the details. In creating mankind, it was so detail-oriented. We are detailed creatures. And then for this spirit to be sitting inside this body, God is very detailed. And for the Holy Spirit to dwell within us, God is very detailed. So if he took the time to do all of that, to all of that, if he took the time to do all of that, don't you know that he's taking the time to speak to you every single day? But you haven't been hearing it. You haven't been seeing it because you've been looking for him in one way. So he's taking you out of that box. And for me now, again, God is speaking to you and all around you every day. And it's not always in the place that you're used to hearing. It's not always in a place that you're used to hearing. So ask him to help you to see. Lord, help me to see. Lord, help me to hear. Heighten my spiritual senses that I will be sensitive to when you're speaking, what you're showing me, what you're trying to get me to grasp. And I did an entire series uh, when I talked about uh, your five spiritual senses. We're used to just hearing and seeing. And I taught about smelling in the spirit, tasting in the spirit, touching in the spirit. All those through the Holy Spirit. All through the Holy Spirit. Someone said he speaks to me via memory recall, showing me it was him that kept me from danger, etc. Well, bless the Lord. Yes, he's speaking to us all. He, he'll speak to you. <coughs> I was telling someone yesterday, it's God is so strategic. So that's why it's important to record your dreams. Write down your dreams, dreams that you believe are, are significant. Because he will use a very dream that you had. He just didn't re it. A dream I had a year or two ago. And I forgot all about this dream. I, I, mean, I recorded it, but thank the Lord, I recorded it with my phone, typed in a certain thing, and it came up. And he said, look, remember this dream? And it was something about, when, it was pretty much, it, I, I got a, I, I went to some part of heaven. He allowed me to get to see some part of heaven. And it was like, this looked like this hospital wing of the hospital, looked like whatever. And I just remember, he was like, the, the, the sense of it, you can tell it's very serious. Like the, like the angel there, they were serious. And I went back and it was like there was these different rooms, like people in these rooms, like different compartments, departments, whatnot. And I just remember hearing something very significant is going to happen in three years. Or something lowest lines, I gotta go back, but it because it, it came came up a few days ago, but um something significant. Uh you know, it, it pretty much said that God's not playing, it was that something significant significant was gonna happen in three years. I don't remember all the details of it, but but he brought to my memory to my my memories. To remind me remembrance, um, and literally, in a three years, this is that third year. I forgot about the dream. Didn't think that about the dream until the Holy Spirit brought it up to me. Clearly, God was trying to tell me something. Oh, remember that three years I told you about? Guess what? It's that time. So you get what I'm saying. So He's speaking to you all types of ways, all types of ways, all types of ways. You might keep saying that same word over and over and over. Why, why, why God keep bringing up this scripture to me? Why he, why he keep showing me this city? He keeps showing me this state. I can't get this thing out everywhere I go. It's on the license plate. It's on the name tag. Something, something, something. This person's name keeps coming up. Except different ways. Yes, the enemy trying different things too. But, 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 uh, but not this the next point I'm making. You got to catch this. You got to catch this. This will, this will transform if you can catch this thing. Because you know I talk about legal rights and how the enemy gets legal rights. And can use legal rights to access you, to steal from etc. But please understand, if the enemy tries to block communication in one way, check another. Check another. Check another way. God is speaking. Because watch this now. This, 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 I want to hammer this home. Hearing from God. Please hear me now. I'm not talking to your flesh. I'm talking to your spirit. Hearing from God is the one area. And this is fresh off, the, fresh off the press. Got this revelation today. Hearing from God is the one area that demons cannot exercise a legal right to block or hinder you. Did you hear me? I'm going to say it again. Hearing from God is the one area that demons cannot exercise a legal right to block or hinder you. Someone said, I just had a conversation with someone today. Amen. Brain confirmation. So I said again, you got to catch this now. You got to catch this. Please hear me. You, you got to get this in your spirit. I'm helping you here. Hearing, it blessed me when I got, I got excited. Hearing from God is the one area 
that demons cannot exercise a legal right to block or hinder you in. Remember I said that things can be in your bloodline and an enemy can have a legal right to steal, to rob you, to do certain things because legally he's, he's, he's all about legality. Satan is a legalist. He understands the laws of God. He knows legally if he has a legal right to do certain things, he will do it legally. No matter what it is, based on legal rights. That's why he tried to bring accusations against the children of God. But this one area, he knows he has no legal rights. He can't stop you from hearing from God. He can't stop me from hearing from God legally. No matter what the legal right is, no matter what you did, what you didn't do, what your bloodline did, what your ancestors did, this is the one legal right. One area he does not have a legal right to operate in. He cannot use a legal right to come against you. Hello, somebody. And so therefore, you have to get used to God speaking in different ways. God is trying to show you something. He's trying to tell you something. He's communicating with you. We just have to take the limits off of how uh, God can communicate with us. How you think God can communicate with you. You understand? So again, taking the limits off. Taking the limits off. So, so, so I'm going to give you another example. Think about someone who is close to you. Someone you're cool with, you're close with. And you know, your girlfriend, uh, uh, your, your, your homeboy, whatever the case would be. Uh, think about how you can look. At them, a family member, your mom, your daddy, whoever, sister, you can look at them. You can be in a public place and you can look at them, but they know exactly, and y'all just laugh, you just smirk. Y'all both know exactly what y'all looking at, what y'all talking about. You, you, you both know. You both know. Someone says, How do you know what he's saying? Well, that's part of this series to help you understand when God's speaking, how God's speaking. So as we go through this series, it's going to begin to open your eyes to how to know when God is speaking. So you know you can be in a place. You can look at somebody. And you, and you know you can't say it publicly because it might be something funny. It might be some inside joke. So you just look at each other. But because y'all so close, y'all know what's going on. Y'all both smirk because you know what time it is. You know what's happening. But just by that, that, that nonverbal communication, which, which is saying, what, 75% of communication is nonverbal to begin with. So you can look at someone and y'all both laughing because you know, oh, that was funny right there, but I can't laugh right now. But, you know, really, they on timeout. You see what they're doing? Really? They're doing this? Et cetera. And so it, it, it's one, kind, of, kind of a similar thing like, um, uh, you know, you might see someone sneeze in their hand and you see them, you know, uh, in church or something, they're not wiping their face and all this stuff and they top, somebody talking about grab hands. Oh, Lord, I, never, I remember that. I was like, what? No, grab hands. You know what I'm saying? And then I had a friend who looked at me like, oh, Lord, like I saw what happened. Like, okay, I'm going to find something. Let me put my head down like I'm praying so they don't want to try to grab my hand because I decided they sneezed in the hand. I'm not about to hold your hand and you just sneeze in your hand. No, no that's not what happened. And then you're, you're been in service and somebody nudging you like, hey, hey, at least grab hands. I don't want to hold your hand because I just saw you sneeze in your hand. I just saw you wipe for something you did. And I don't want to hold it because I, you know, I don't want to do it. But you can have a friend. You've been in a certain setting. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, something even simple. You saw someone, you know, let's say, you know, public gathering and, and, and you know, you might have some chips and and, and, and I'll never forget I was, uh, when I was in Atlanta many years ago, uh, a job I was working to and, you know, they opened up bags and chips and stuff like that and a little potluck, whatever. And, uh, and someone literally, their hand went clean. No, their hand went clean. Man, I know they was nasty. And they went put their hand in that, they put their hand in that chip bag. And me and the person look at each other like, really? Really? We know we're not eating that chip. We know we're not eating them chips. You know what I'm saying? And so, no, I say it's up to press it. You can't put your hand in the bag, you know, whatever, because I, was, I knew enough about them to tell them that. But I'm just showing you, but you can look. Y'all don't have to say that, but y'all both saw that. You, 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 pretty much that look is saying, you saw what I just saw, really? We ain't eating that chip. So the, I'm showing that concept that the same way you can have that communication and line of contact with someone you're close, close with, someone you're cool with, someone who gets it, whatever the case would be, very similar to your relationship with God. Very similar to your relationship with God. Uh, uh, it's very similar because God, God, um, now I want to go eat them chips. Now I want to go eat them chips. And so, so, so God uh, doesn't have to say anything. God doesn't, have, hear me now. God doesn't have to say anything. He can show you something. And your spirit automatically knows it. You could be driving in a car. You could be sitting on somewhere and something pops up and just it bears with your, bears with your spirit. God just revealed something to you right there. You're like, oh my God, that's God. That's God. That's confirmation for me. He didn't have to say a word to you. Holy Spirit didn't have to say a word. And I tell you all the time, we talk about hearing from God. I can, I can 
I've only heard God's audible voice twice. There's others who teach, you know, God's audible voice is not something you're necessarily going to hear all the time. But because he's, the Holy Spirit seeks out the things of God, reveals it to us, and it bears with our spirit, and that's him speaking. That's God speaking. Even though it's not an audible voice, he's still speaking to you. He's revealing something to you. That's how you, 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 you get a quickening in your spirit. Something bears with your spirit. It brings confirmation to your spirit. That's God speaking. That's God showing you something. And you, may, you might be having a conversation. And, oh, well, that just bear with my spirit. Say that again? Yeah, that just hit me. Somebody said, my mom and daughter heard his audible voice. Amen, absolutely. And, and like I said, I can tell you the times when I heard God's audible voice. And, 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 and so I'm showing you that, but he's always speaking. Even without hearing his audible voice. I just said how he will show you something. He don't have to say a word, but he just showed you something. So you just have to get used to how he does it. Someone said, that's why no one can tell when God is speaking to me. I feel him. Absolutely. You sense his presence. You know when he's trying to get your attention to something. That's relationship. He's deal he deals with us all in different ways. So you have to get used to that God is speaking, but just not in all the ways that you believe he's going to speak. So you can get out of prayer, and he might give you that answer right when you get out of prayer. You can go into worship, and he might get the answer, begin to minister to you, begin to show you some things while you're right there, then and there. He's always speaking. So I'm trying to get you to understand that we, we, we made it. And as we go deeper in this series, it's going to become simpler for you. And then you go, like, my God, I really am hearing from God daily. Now, that's why it goes back to your prayer life. You, you, you have to remember, it goes back to what I said at the very beginning. It takes time. But, but you have to make time for him all the time. It takes you making time all the time. All the time. Making time for God. And so again, that's why we have to commune with him daily. That's why we have to commune with him daily so you can learn different ways in which he communicates. That's why there's certain friends, family members, you know how they communicate. Y'all can communicate non-verbally and know exactly what the point y'all trying to get across. Or you have been, been in a... Uh, uh, in a situation, someone said to hear from him, we have to spend time with him. It's like a, any relationship. Absolutely. Now, you ever been in a situation that you start talking in code? Like, you around somebody, hey, you know, da da da, you know, I mean, and then they, you're trying to get their attention, like, hey, man, look at me. What you, you know, and then they finally get your attention, like, oh, what, what you trying to say? And then, then you kind of point, you know, nodding your head, like, look over there, look, you know, talking under your breath. You, you're communicating with a particular person because you're trying to get their attention to see whatever it is that you're trying to get them. Uh, uh, to see, and that's that's relationship. You 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 communicate with this person something you're trying to get them to see, and God is nudging. He's doing these different things. Look, look, I'm trying to get you to see it. Look over there. I'm nudging you. Hey, look over there. I'm I, 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 you saw this, but I'm trying to get you to see this. And, and you might see a billboard that had nothing to do with nothing to do with God, but He'll use that billboard to, to get your attention when He's trying to get to tell you. Just, just simple as that. Think about it. You go out. You drive. For example, this, where I live in this area, everywhere I go, it seems like every city, this one lower is on every billboard. And it's a very simple number, but he's on every billboard. So what you think? The mindset is like, okay, you get an accident, you're going to call this guy. That's advertising. Because you the first person come along because it's already in your brain now because you keep seeing it. But God will use that, them same sign, type of signposts. I remember one time I was going somewhere, we, was, we went the wrong way. And turned out, and, 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 and the lower just kept on top of 24 miracles. Um, and 24 America literally went down and then started speaking and it says 24 hours. Signpost, just something that we just had the conversation and God confirmed it coming down and we, were, we went the wrong way. We went the wrong direction, didn't realize we're going the wrong way. I'm sitting there talking, we're going the wrong way, turn around. Oh, 24 hours. So, so he's speaking in so many ways, he's just trying to nudge you. He's like, look, I'm speaking to you in every aspect of your life. I'm speaking to you in every aspect of your life. And every, he will use anything. To speak to you, to get your attention. To show you, I got you, I got your back. This is what I'm trying to get you. This is what I'm trying to get you to understand. And so I'm just putting it all in perspective. Again, communion with God. Let's go to Hebrews 12. Amen. Someone said there's no accidents with God. Absolutely. No accidents. Not, I, when I, I taught a few weeks back when I said nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. There's a cause and effect for everything. Hebrews 12 and 24. Now turn the Q&A mode on, those who are listening by phone. If you have any questions, comments, anything you want to share by phone, you can hit, hit star six. Those who are listening by phone, you can hit star six. 
and I'll be able to bring you on and live. Again, star six on your phone if you, if you have any questions, comments, or anything you want to share. All right. Again, that is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. Just one verse. It says, To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. And to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Than that of Abel. And so here the writer is talking about the new covenant in Christ that is even better than the old covenant. So we understand that Jesus is the mediator of this new covenant, right? The new covenant that we have in Christ. So Jesus stands between us and God, urging us to keep coming to God. Keep coming, keep coming. And, and he's our advocate to God. Christ is our advocate to God. Please understand. And so he's urging us, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. He's our advocate when Satan brings accusations against us. Because the enemy is always trying to bring accusations Against you. And and guess what? It could be it could even be something you didn't do. It's something that happened on your bloodline, and he gonna break accusations. Well, legally, they're guilty of it because technically this is on their bloodline. So legally I can get to them because their bloodline is guilty of this. Their bloodline is guilty of this. So he's constantly bringing accusations, but Christ is your advocate. And there's so much that God has protected you from. He sent the angels to protect you from. And so, and so again, Christ our advocate. In the old covenant, the blood of animal sacrifice, we know, you know they had to do animal sacrifices, was sprinkled on the altar uh, and on the person, but now the blood of Jesus is sprinkled on us. Right? And so when you open your mouth and you tell the blood of Jesus to go into your soul, you, etc., uh, your soul receives a huge boost for that day. I sent the blood of Jesus into my soul. Father, I receive grace today. It, it, it's, doing, it's going into you. It's going into you. And so this passage shows us that the blood of Jesus speaks. And I've taught on this a little bit before. How the blood of Jesus speaks. It has a voice. Our blood, your blood, my blood even speaks. Our blood and our pain cries unto God when we don't even say a word because there's life in the blood. There's life in your blood. That's why if there's a blood flow problem, uh, it causes problems in the body. When the blood stops flowing properly and it, it causes issues in the body. You know what I'm saying? So your blood speaks. It speaks. It speaks. It has power. But it's the blood of Jesus that has all power. So when your spirit cries out to God, every part of you cries out. Did you hear me? When your spirit cries out to God, every part of you cries out. Every part of you. Because again, your spirit, when it's in control, then your soul and your flesh has to submit to it. Right? And so, again... Even your blood cries out because it knows that only God has the answer. Only God has the answer. So your flesh may want the things of the world, but if it's in pain, guess what? It wants what's going to make it better. It want, Even though your flesh wants the things of the world, when it comes down to a tax on your body, your flesh is going to want whatever can fix it. Please understand, to make it better. So it's in those moments that it wants God to intervene because it's in desperate need of help. Your body and soul has its own agenda, but when your spirit is in control, they must submit to the agenda of God. They must submit to the agenda of God. Please understand, they have to submit to it. And so, understand, uh, yes, that's why the Holy Spirit can intercede for us without saying a word. This is why we must feed our spirit, like I said. Let that word play when you're sleeping. Your body is a tool or a vessel to be used by God so your spirit can carry out its duty on earth. As we understand it. So your spirit can carry out its duty on earth. So Cain and Abel, we understand, made a sacrifice unto God in the Old Testament. Cain, we know, tilled the ground and brought an offering to God from some of what he produced. Abel tended the sheep, etc. He offered unto God the firstborn of the flock. So God respected Abel's offering, uh, but not Cain's. And so there was something that Cain didn't do that God did not accept. There's something Cain did not do that caused God not to accept his offering. It could be because of sin uh, that was not addressed or that it wasn't done in faith. Abel also offered a blood sacrifice of the animal. Cain was angry because God respected Abel's offering over his. So Cain, we know Cain killed Abel. Uh, and then God then said that Abel's blood cried out to him from the ground. Genesis 4 and 10. That, that his blood cried out. 
from the ground. God heard the cry of his, his blood from the ground. And so this is an indicator uh, that bloodshed is not overlooked. Bloodshed is not overlooked. And so Cain also tried to act like he didn't know where Abel was after God questioned him. And of course, during this time, before Christ came, uh, no one automatically went to heaven. They were, they were in uh, uh, kind of this, there was this, this gourd or this, this barrier between those who were uh, pretty much set to go to hell and those who were set to go to heaven. And so that's what they, they, they called it, um, even being in Abraham's bosom. That Remember when the, the rich man died, they say he, he was in Abraham's bosom. That means right next to Abraham. So there was this side, and he said, you know, just, you know, Tuck, put your finger on, a, on in, in the water and just put it on the tip of my tongue. But he couldn't cross over. The, the rich man that died couldn't cross. I mean, the rich man that died couldn't cross over. The beggar died and he was pretty much there with 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 the other saints who were gonna who was for heaven. Now of course, and then the, the one who was marked for hell, he was being tortured and tormented. But now that Christ has came, now when we die, we 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 die in Christ, we go to heaven. We die out of Christ, go go to hell automatically. So there's no kind of that period of, you know, there was still already a difference, a separation. But now they are in heaven with God, those who died in Christ. And so, of course, we understand releasing the blood of, the, blood of Jesus against the enemy and spiritual warfare. When you release the blood of Jesus, it speaks against darkness. It speaks to bring vengeance upon demons, etc. So not going to get deep into that tonight because that's another lesson. Uh, now, let's go to Ephesians 2 and 13. I'm just building my case. Then we're going to park on our last passage to really... Help you get to know how what you can do when it comes to communion with God. Ephesians 2 and 13. Just one verse again. Ephesians 2 and 13. Ephesians 2 and 13. It says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once, you who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You who once were far off, have been brought near by the the blood of Christ. By the blood of Christ. So this passage outlines how we were once far off from God before Christ came. And so the Jews saw the Gentiles as being far off from God before Christ came. So you may feel like you're the outside, you know, looking in, but the blood of Jesus can change your position. The blood of Jesus can change your position. And so we couldn't even approach God for ourselves prior to the blood of Jesus being shed. We couldn't approach for ourselves. So only the priests we know could approach God on behalf of the people. And they had to sprinkle the blood for the pardoning of sins, etc. But it all changed after Christ's sacrifice. We understand this. So the blood of Jesus, building my case here, the blood of Jesus brings you nearer to God. It brings you nearer to God. And so when you call for the blood to cover you, it brings you closer to God. So this is another, another way of understanding the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus brings you closer to God. Now, and I said before... You have to understand the different aspects and components of the blood of Jesus. When you accept Jesus Christ, you now have been washed in the blood. That aspect of being washed in the blood is salvation. It preps you for salvation. But that is just, salvation is not the beginning, it's the end. It, it give, it, it, it's, I, I accept Jesus Christ, so it's preparing me for eternity. That's, that's washing away my sins. I got the blood of Jesus now. I've been saved. My sins are washed away and the blood of Jesus. But the blood of Jesus can also be used as a war weapon to war against the enemy. You send the blood of Jesus to uproot demonic seeds. You send the blood of Jesus to speak. The blood of Jesus has a voice. It has a voice. So when you send the blood of Jesus, it speaks on God's behalf. It speaks against the enemy. So you say, I send the blood of Jesus into, into, into every demonic camp that's working against me. I send the blood of Jesus uh, 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 to, to cover my loved one, etc. So, so you're saying that when you're sending the blood, it's speaking. Now the blood turns into a war weapon. It's a weapon of warfare. Right? So that's another aspect of the blood of Jesus. But now right here, uh, uh, as we're talking about the blood of Jesus, now when you say, Lord, send the blood, cover me in the blood. You, you don't, you're not asking him to cover. You don't have to keep saying, Lord, cover me in the blood when it comes to uh, salvation because you already accepted Christ. So you've got the blood for that. But now when you ask him to send the blood into your life, like I said, you can send it into your soul to begin to heal some wounds in your soul. That's another aspect. So the blood of Jesus also acts as a healing component. It can, the blood of Jesus heals. Lord, I send the blood of Jesus into my neck, into my arm, into my heart. Send the blood of Jesus into wherever, 
you know, your loved one's arms, their, their heart, their lungs, whatever being impacted. So now the blood of Jesus turned into a healing ointment. You see? So the, the, the blood of Jesus is multifaceted. Multifaceted. And so, now, remember I said now, that's why Satan understands this. We talk, I had a conversation with someone recently. They talked about, well, I, I don't know about all this deliverance stuff because I got the blood of Jesus. Someone said, even communion, a symbolic reputation of the blood has healing power. We're about to talk about that in a minute. And so, uh, and so you trying to preach my message. You, you trying to preach the message. That you, you teach some Bible study. All right. And so, and so, and so watch this now. Uh, and so, someone was like, well, what all this deliverance stuff? I don't know what all that because I got the blood. I just pray to God and I got the blood. And how many times I told y'all, ain't no demon we ever cast out. that somebody wasn't covered in the blood of Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost. Satan can go around the blood. If you talk about just the blood that's protect you as far as salvation, he can go around that blood if he got a legal right. Hello, somebody. So he knows that. He understands illegalities. So just talk about, oh, I got the blood. I don't need it. I'm showing you all the different components of the blood. There's power in the blood. Very powerful. But you got to know how to use it. You have to understand how it operates. You got to understand how, how it operates. We talk about the blood Jesus when it comes to uh, salvation. You already got that. If it was just all, if it's just me being covered in the blood and that's all it took, then there would be no evil in the world. So obviously Satan has legal rights. So I'm just putting it all in perspective. That the blood, we didn't know, we didn't know how to use the blood and understand how the blood functions. All right. And so again, so again, the blood, of, when you call for the blood of Jesus, it, it, it brings you closer to God. It draws you close. He said, you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. So now, Lord, send the blood of Jesus to cover me. Now you're not actually going to send the cover you for salvation because you got him. You got Christ. Now you're actually going to send the blood to cover you to draw me near to you, God. Lord, send the blood. Send the blood. Send the blood. Let it flow. Let it flow in my life. Let it flow in my life. It's drawing me closer to God. So you're not as far away from God as you may feel sometimes. Send the blood of Jesus to flow into your life. And it will help you draw near. So you have to keep seeking God until you find what you're looking for. And when you're in Christ, it changes your perspective on things. What looked like a problem simply becomes a stepping stone. All right, let's go to uh, our last passage, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 17 to 34. We're going to spend some time here. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 17 through 34. And this is the, uh, about the Lord's Supper, about communion. And this is where I'm going to really park and, 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 and tie it all together here. I'm going to break some tradition uh, so you got to really understand the power and, and, and how you can use this, the blood of Jesus to your benefit. 1 Corinthians 11, 17 to 34 says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. The same night in which he was betrayed. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Keep that, keep that in mind. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup and the new covenant, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord is in, in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. All right. So, of course, this, this passage, Paul's Paul is talking about the blood of Jesus the body, of, uh, the body of Jesus Christ, uh, the, the Lord's Supper that Christ himself instituted when he met, was sitting with the disciples and, 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 and the final feast and he was broken the bread and, and they drank the wine, etc. But now he said, people are like, are we literally going to eat your body? Are we literally going to drink your blood? No, this is symbolic of it. But he was, they didn't get the parable. He was trying to get them that this was symbolic of it. And so he said, notice in verse uh, 24, he said, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broke for you. We talk about Holy Communion. This, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. So we know we take communion. We're talking about the new covenant with Christ. This 
This do as often as you drink it. Do it in remembrance of me. So first of all, first point to understand, communion brings you back in fellowship with God. I'm about to help some of y'all tonight now. God is really going to set you free when it comes to really beginning to hear from him more. Communion brings you back in fellowship with God. Taking the Lord's Supper. Taking the Lord's Supper. Taking the Lord's Supper. See, see, you preaching, you, you preaching there. See, you are going to teach Bible study next week. Uh, she, she, she get, she got ahead of me there. Uh, Leticia, uh, got ahead of me. Uh, she said some folks don't know they can take communion at home. I'm glad you brought that up. That's the point that I was getting to. Uh, so communion brings you back in fellowship with God. Communion can bring healing. Can bring healing. I, I know a story uh, uh, of, 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 of a preacher who they took communion every day, every day, every day, every day. And got healed every day. Kept up because communion is it's, it's fellowship with God. You're now it brings you it it, it bring it, it's it's remembering what Christ did for you. So gr communion is a great start from hearing from God. She just said, I take it home when I feel like I'm empty and need healing. Absolutely, communion can bring healing, bring deliverance as you continue to do it, and then your revelation will begin to flow. You begin to flow. So you don't have to wait. Please understand, you don't have to wait till you're in church. Noah's communion just on the first Sunday when you put on the ushers where they white and the missionaries where they white and all that is just on first Sunday and they're saying they all the blood song and the blood done sign my name and what can wash away my sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus, all very powerful. There's power in the blood of Jesus, great, wonderful, absolutely. But guess what? It ain't just on first Sunday. It ain't just on the first Sunday. You can take communion every single day and you don't need pastor to bless it. You don't need to tell folks, oh, I can't touch communion. That's, I can't, that's only the pastor. I ain't no pastor, so I can't touch. You can commune with yourself. You can go get, uh, you can get a piece of bread. Don't have to be no special bread. You get a loaf of bread. You, you break that thing off and bless it. Bless it. Pray over it. You can go get some grape juice. Get some grape juice. Pray over it. Say, Lord, I consecrate this. I, I submit this back unto you so holy you. So now you use this grape juice for communion. Don't be going to use it to drink as well. <laughs> just let that be set aside just for that. Just for that. So, so, so now you have your own communion, your bread. You can even use, look, you can use uh, little crackers, bread, whatever. It, it, it ain't a money thing. You say, okay, I, man, I, 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 I need money to go buy some grape juice. You, 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 can, you, you can bless water and, and sit in that thing, and then you can let that water be. So please understand. I'm just helping you understand that you can commune because it's about communion with God. And look what he said. He says uh, in verse 25, do this, this do as often, 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 often. So if you wait for communion just when you get in church, you, you are a priest in your own home. In your own home. If you're married, you, your whole family can have communion at home. If you're single, still you can have communion, you and yourself and God. On your job, on your lunch break, you have your, your, your stuff, you know what I'm saying? But it's sacred. It is sacred now. It is sacred. It ain't something, you know, it's sacred. But you can bless it yourself, and you have communion. You pull out that's this same scripture, pull out the, the one in, 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 in the gospel, and you, and you you read that scripture, and and you take your communion, you pray, and you read. And some folks been taught, you know, say, man, you know, and some folks, well, I, I'm I'm afraid to take that communion. I don't feel right. I feel like something off. So I'm that because they hear verse 27 it says, whoever eats his bread drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body. And blood of the Lord, and so the enemy is crafty because he had he has some of you using that like well, I ain't taking no communion because I I know I got to get some things together I ain't taking no communion, but it's communion that's gonna draw you closer to God. So when he's saying in an unworthy manner, he's talking about if you sitting there, there's no repentance of your sin. You just I don't care now. I'm just gonna take it. I'm taking it. I'm, like it ain't nothing. Like it ain't no. You're not understanding that how sacred it is that you're when you're doing this. You're 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 remembering Christ's sacrifice. You you're coming in fellowship with Christ. As you're taking communion. And so, and so with that blockage, if you feel like I'm not taking communion, you're literally blocking your relationship with God. When he's, when he's saying that, you know, that's why I said many are sick among you. Uh, he said those who eat drinks in an unworthy manner, eat and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning mm -hmm. the Lord's body. What he's saying is take it seriously, yes. But don't be afraid to take it. You, if anything else, because you did mess up, you need to repent and take communion. Not, oh, I mess, I better get it right. So, oh, no, I got to get it right. Oh, I don't repent with a sense of heart. I mean, re repenting is not just lip service. It's really low. I don't want to do this again. Help me. I can't do it myself. I'm taking this communion to bring me closer to you. Holy communion. So bless it yourself. Bless it yourself. 
And I know this is messing up some of your theology because some of you believe that pastor got to bless my communion and I got to take communion only on the first Sunday, only at church. I can't take it. You can take communion every day for the rest of your life. And guess what? You can take communion several times a day. You can take communion ten times a day because you're talking about fellowship with God. Several times a day. Now, I didn't say one time a day. You can take it several times a day. Now, I tell you, there's people who have been healed just from taking communion every day. And notice there's a connection. He said, there's many sick among you. So that's the, the correlation. Well, he said many sick among you because I took an unworthy. That means that I can also be healed through communion because it's represented the blood of Jesus. By his stripes, we were healed. His blood. You're, this is not, this, this is his blood and his body is represented of his blood. Everybody, when, when he, when he died for you. The cup in this, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often, as often, right there, as you drink it. As often, keyword, often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. So you're doing it in remembrance of him. So you're going to tell me that you can only remember what Christ did and do this in remembrance of him only on first Sunday? You can't do that. You only can do it at church. You can't do it at home. You can't do it. Rem you can't remember what Christ did for you, except you you go into a church building. Just think about that now. Because Paul and Paul went from home to home, house to house. They went place and they they broke bread uh, uh, often. And and oftentimes, could you see breaking of bread? They were talking about the Lord's Supper. Some instances talking about breaking bread in a sense of fellowship, but uh, in Acts is talking about uh, oftentimes about the actual Lord's Supper. Communion. So, so right there, some of y'all need to, and so I'm giving you right now what some. This is your assignment. This is your assignment. If you haven't already done it, we know Letitia Clay has already done it. Go and you, you get yourself some grape juice. Uh, whether you want to get bread, whether you get crackers, whatever you want to do, and you bless it. Yes, you can bless it. Pray over it. Say, Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm committing this back unto you for. Uh, a holy purpose, sacred purpose. I'm, I'm committing this unto you that this will represent your your blood. This will represent your body. Uh, so you consecrate it, Lord. Bless this. Je oh, it said Jesus. Je it said Jesus broke the bread. He gave thanks. So you're giving thanks, Lord. I thank you that this represents your body. This represents your blood. And so now I'm saved. So now you set that aside somewhere. That knowing they say something, I'm gonna go eat this this these crackers, do communion, then I'm gonna eat these crackers personally. You know what I'm saying? It's sacred. So it is. Because it's represent what it's represented of, and so you and so so that's your assignment, your homework, and you bless her. You go get with grape juice, like I said, it will be something in your house, if it, even if it's just water and crackers or bread. You get it, you pray over it, you bless it, and now that's gonna be your communion, and you take communion at home. I want you to take it at home, and I want you to take it several times uh, before next Bible study. Several times, several times. And so now you, and so you can get in the habit of, and that's going to begin to help bring you closer to God. That's what communion does. It brings you closer, closer to God. He said, as often as you eat, as often as you drink. Now, remember I said earlier how the blood of Jesus brings you, draws you closer, closer to God. Now we're literally talking about the blood of Jesus. Communion is drawing you closer to God. And it's, so that's, that's you communing with him. And so that's, that's your assignment. That's your homework assignment uh, to go to do that, get that bread. Get that uh, juice or whatever you want to use, and you consecrate it. Uh, even if even if it's wine, whatever you you consecrate it. Uh, someone said, "Can I?" Do? Yes, you can do extra credit. You do extra credit. What, what, what's the extra credit going to be? Well, let's well, we have to come up with something that you can do since you you already have yours uh, at home. Um, uh, so yeah, so so again, that's something. Put I just want to I just want to hammer that home to you. When we're talking about communing with God, that's one way that you, you commune with God. And that's something you can be, begin implementing right now. Right now. You just bless it. You're giving thanks. You say, I'm dedicating this back unto God for a holy purpose. And now you have your communion. You have your bread. You have your juice, your wine, whatever. And now you, you have this, you having communion at home. Having communion at work. On your lunch break. On your break. Etc. And, you know, and, and, and incorporate, incorporate that even into your prayer time. Communion with God. And it's very simple. It takes a very short amount of time just for that part of it. But still, in conjunction with your prayer life, with praise and worship, with the word of God, all, the, all this goes together. And God wants you, Christ wants you to do this often. He said as often as you do it. Now, there's some people who uh, believe they only take it once a year. Okay, that's fine with them. They want to take it once a year. But... 
I'm a firm proponent of doing it often. Often. And some of y'all want to get fancy, might want to go to the, the store and buy the little, the, the, the preset one with the cup and, and, the, and, the, and the plastic, you know, the wafer on top of the plastic, you know, a lot of churches use it. Some of you may want to go and buy that, but I'm telling you how you can make one right there at home. Right there, right there at home. Um, for yourself. And, and guess what? And guess what? You can also, you know, you bring your family members in on it. Bring your family members in on it. And so again, so, so that, that's all I have tonight, but I just wanted to, to hammer that home about, uh, you know, hearing from God daily. Hearing from God daily. So I'm going to open the lines up again. Again, star six. Star six on your phone if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to share, star six, star six. And I can bring you on in live if you have any questions, comments, anything you want uh, to share. All right. And next week, um, I'm not sure exactly uh, if we're going to have Bible study on Tuesday. Is not. Uh, so it's a prayer for me as God is sending me abroad to work in Japan. Amen. Okay, definitely pray for you uh, with uh, him sending you out to Japan. Uh, because uh, I have to head out of town on Tuesday uh, for a funeral on uh, Wednesday. Uh, so you guys see all the news. Uh, Bishop A. Long passed. That's my spiritual cover. Was my spiritual covering. My pastor uh, taught me about kingdom, and, and, and so he birthed me out. So um, we'll be heading out to Atlanta uh, for that funeral, and I'm not sure if I'll be in transit during that time um, for Bible study. Um, so I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, I'm thinking that we may not have it next Tuesday, um, but I'll announce it on social media um, if we won't either way or if we will. So you, you'll know about it. So just be on the lookout for that um, as far as if we will or will not have it on next Tuesday. Um, and so we'll, we'll kind of go from there, but I'll let you know uh, for sure. All right, so the first call is um, if you're not saved, you know that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Christ came and you may have life. And that you may have it more abundantly. As I said at the beginning, earlier, salvation is not the end. Salvation is just the beginning. Salvation is just the beginning. It's just the beginning. You can't get it right without Christ. If you're not saved, we want you. You can come on a call, come on Periscope, Facebook Live, or you can send an email to info at thecoregreen.org. Info at thecoregreen.org. That's D-O-Q-U-O-I. G R E E N dot O R G info at the core green dot O R G and also if you have prayer requests uh, you can send it uh, there as as well uh, and the second call of course if you know that uh, this is home this is home this is you're getting fed week after week you're growing here this is you're being stretched you know that I'm your pastor your spiritual covering if you know that that's you no matter where you are across the world. Holy Spirit has been nudging you. Remember I said God has been speaking, God's speaking, and he's been speaking to you week after week after week on Bible study. He's been speaking to you week after week after week on Bible study that this is home, that I'm your pastor, your spiritual cover. So if you know that's you, and you've been procrastinating, you've been putting off, like I said, it's not about membership. It's about what God is doing this hour, how he's connecting us uh, to accomplish his will in the earth. And so if you know that's you, and it's, he said it's about soldiers, raising up soldiers. You are a soldier. Uh, being raised up for a time such as this. So if you know that that's you, send an email to membership. Membership at decorgreen.org. Again, that's membership at decorgreen.org. And we'll welcome you to the to the to the upper room uh, Kingdom Church family, also known as the room. Welcome you to the to, to the room and we would love to have you uh, to part with us as God has led you here. Amen. As God has led you here. Amen. And uh, and the last call of course, is if you know this is good ground, good word, you're learning, you're being encouraged, being strengthened, being stretched, then you sow back into the word. You sow back into uh, the ministry. So you go to decoygreen.org. Decoygreen.org. That's D O Q U O I G R E E N.org. You go to the Upper Room Kingdom Church tab, uh, and then you click on Donate, uh, Upper Room Kingdom Church, and you sow whatever the Lord placed on your heart to sow. Back into the ministry, and remember that whenever you sow a seed, you put it, you name it, you name that seed. What do you want that seed to accomplish in your life, so that you can uh, monitor that seed and watch and grow and pray over it, etc. Because uh, some of you have sown some seeds and you just sowed a random seed, then name it. But you name that seed, so you can expect that harvest. Look, I pray for this, I sow the seeds for this, and I expect this harvest. And praying and warning of it, because the enemy done come and snatch some harvest that you knew nothing about, because you just sowed a casual seed. 
You're already fighting you enough, so you need to not just sow casually. Sow and name what you want that seed. What do you believe in God for? Name that seed. Uh, amen. And so again, decorahgreen.org and govern yourselves accordingly. All right. I don't see anyone else in the queue with any questions. So I guess that means all hearts and minds are clear. I don't see anyone uh, Facebook Live uh, or uh, Periscope with any other questions. So uh, I will close this on out and pray. I'm trying to think if there's any other announcements. I don't believe so. Father God, we come now to the end of yet another Bible study. We thank you, O God, for all that was said and done tonight. We thank you for just teaching us the importance of just communing with you, God, taking communion uh, in remembrance of Christ's sacrifice for us and just drawing us close to you. I thank you, O God, for just showing us how much you are speaking, how much you are communicating with, communicating with us on a daily basis in so many different days ways so many different arenas so we just thank you for it, oh god continue to open our eyes of understanding holy spirit that we will hear we will see we will experience all that god is communicating with us day to day on a daily basis we thank you oh god we bless your name i declare your spirit of peace shall rest upon the home of these your people oh god i declare oh god that uh your ministry angels will continue to minister unto them i come against the spirit of of distraction i come against any demon that will try to snatch this word i declare it shall take root in their lives oh god for we know that your word shall accomplish what you set it out to accomplish so we thank you for their lives we thank you for the praise reports of oh god even as they begin to take communion oh god uh in their own home oh god just thank you for the praise reports that will begin to come forth oh god as they they, they begin to govern themselves according when it comes to communing with you oh god and that how they begin to see you more and hear you more oh god and 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 so many things that maybe they didn't even even think that you you we're speaking in, O oh God. So we just thank you, God, for clarity. Holy Spirit, continue to remove the scales from their eyes, the chaff from their soul, O oh God. So, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your name now. These are blessed. We ask you, your son, Jesus, and we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So, of course, you know, on social media, I'll have the uh, playback uploaded tomorrow, of course, on F Facebook and Periscope. You know that you can watch it as soon as, it, as it's over. All right, so remember that you are the breath of God and God. Never waste a breath. This is Apostle Decor, the Duke Green. Sign out. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Good night.